The year is 1880. The Industrial Revolution is gaining momentum. George Eastman patents a roll of film for his box camera, little knowing the history it will record. In the industrial heartland of Aurora, Illinois, Mr. Wilcox starts the Wilcox Manufacturing Company. It quickly becomes the world's largest manufacturer of door hangers and sliding door tracks. The century turns and by 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright take the first successful flight in their air machine in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Back in Aurora, Illinois, Wilcox Manufacturing is also flying and a Mr. Richards decides to compete. He starts the Richards Manufacturing Company making the same products. 1910, the same year the first newsreel is shown in theaters, Richards and Wilcox decide their companies would be greater by working together and join to become the Richards Wilcox Company. They openly discuss the growing interest in flight and ponder where will the air machines be kept when they are not flying. In 1912, the company establishes its first Canadian manufacturing facility in London, Ontario, and immediately opens branches in Montreal, Quebec, and later in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Things are on the move, and in 1913, Henry Ford changes the world forever by introducing the assembly line. Every Model T that drives off the line rides a little smoother on shock absorbers built by Richards Wilcox. But that's not all they made. Richards Wilcox becomes the largest Canadian manufacturer of overway systems, fire doors and fire door hardware, builder's hardware, farm hardware, and specialties like vices, store ladders, and wagon jacks. RW also expands its auto accessories business from shock absorbers to mufflers, heater vents, jacks, and tire tools. They begin manufacturing slide-type garage door hardware and, strangely enough, airplane hangar doors. The golden age of flight was upon us. In the early 30s, Amelia Earhart and Howard Hughes set new speed records and TWA takes delivery of its first DC-1. TWA's technical director is Charles Lindbergh. His test, the plane had to fly over the Rockies on one engine. It did, and commercial air flight was born. The same year, Richards Wilcox expands its product range to include massive airplane hangar doors, roll-tight overhead doors, one-piece overhead doors, partition door hardware, monorail equipment, and elevator hangers. They open more branches in Vancouver, Toronto, Moncton, Kingston, Hamilton, and Edmonton. By mid-century, the baby boom needs an education, and RW is manufacturing bleachers, basketball hoops, and dividing walls for gymnasiums and chalkboards for the classroom. Albert Einstein is declared person of the century with a little help from RW. New technologies such as jet aircraft and the transistor begin to emerge. The opening of the St. Lawrence Seaway in June of 1959 opens American and Canadian Great Lakes ports to world transportation routes. Richards Wilcox manufactures huge floodgates for the power generation industry and expands its roll-tight overhead door line into the commercial industrial door market. Roll-tight quickly becomes the wave of the future. Other heavy industry products include sliding and rolling fire doors, rolling steel doors, and vertiplex and multiplex vertical stacking doors. Even electric door openers, a marvel of its time, were produced in this busy London factory. By 1969, Neil Armstrong takes mankind's first step on the moon, and the Beatles played the Ed Sullivan Show. Life is good. The Roll-Tight family of products exceeds expectations and Richards Wilcox continues to grow. Then the 1970s and trouble strikes when OPEC creates the oil embargo and the world faces its first energy crisis. Business begins to focus on energy efficiency as a way to combat higher energy costs. 
Microsoft, with a little help from Intel's microchip, invents computer programming and the PC. Richards Wilcox expands roll tight to include steel insulated and non insulated 16, 20, and 24 gauge roll form sectional doors. They also begin importing polyurethane product as interest in insulated doors begins to grow. 1986, Reagan and Gorbachev meet to end the Cold War, and Paul Newman wins Best Actor for The Color of Money. Responding to the world's need to conserve energy and clearly seeing the opportunity for polyurethane products, RW relocates headquarters from London to Etobicoke, Ontario, and commences development of the first Canadian continuous polyurethane line in its Winnipeg facilities. It took three long years of hard work, and in 1989, RW proudly introduces Thermatite, Canada's first continuously produced polyurethane steel-insulated sectional door. With the Canadian market quickly adapting to polyurethane product, and for logistic reasons, Richards Wilcox decides to move this revolutionary polyurethane line to Etobicoke. By now, RW has distributors in every province of Canada. It's the 90s, and computers and the internet are starting to reshape the way business will be done. With a clear view and a commitment to the future, Richards Wilcox pioneers the BTMS bulk program. Revolutionary in every way, BTMS empowers the dealer and creates a new place for RW in the industry's history. They move to more modern facilities in Mississauga to meet the coming technology boom. The year is 1992, the same year the Toronto Blue Jays win their first World Series. The very next year, the Jays win the World Series again and Richards Wilcox begins a series of its own with the world. Recognizing the growth potential in the global marketplace, they established distributors first in the US, then Asia and Europe. 1997, RW launches the Alumatite product line and redesigns its hardware for the new linear hardware line. By 1999, Richards Wilcox is introducing their first residential polyurethane insulated product, as well as exponential growth opportunities internationally. RW now has distributors worldwide, including Latin America. The century turns again, and back in Toronto, Pearson International Airport is rapidly expanding. Their obvious choice of doors for the infield cargo facility, Richards Wilcox. The year 2005, and RW has outgrown its facilities again. The new larger building will house three polyurethane lines, including the new line for the finger-protected product, the next generation in advanced technology and superior design. And what does the future hold? No one knows for sure, but one thing is certain. RW will be there, making history with talented people and ingenious innovation. With proud origins dating back to the 19th century, RW has pioneered and been an acknowledged leader in its field continuously since 1880.